Hey guys, today we're going to try and put a jack shaft and a torque converter on the Carter go kart. If you guys have been kind of following along, we have a Carter with a 5 horsepower Briggs and Stratton on it with a CVT. And the CVT just has absolutely no get up trying to get uphill. It just bogs out. We smoke, smoke the clutch, smoke the belt. So today we have two things. We have um, a torque converter kit uh, from Go Power Sports. I couldn't get the full kit that had the back plate, etc., because I have a jack shaft set up. And most of the kits are a uh, in this size were a three quarter inch drive and a uh, five eighths inch um, driven that came in with the back plate. And I have a three quarter inch jack shaft, so I had to get kind of mix and match the pieces. Called up Go Power Sports, and they got me set up on what I needed there. I then pulled off the jack shaft, um, but had some trouble with the original. I just couldn't get the pulley off. I banged at it, put heat against it, um, ultimately mangled it probably a little bit there. And so ultimately decided, and if you see I've got this groove where I'm just spinning on one of the bearings. So I decided to get my hands on another uh, jack shaft. Looked everywhere, finally found one with uh, gokartmasters.com. So this is what we have here. Three quarter inch jack shaft that's uh, I want to say 12, little, just, just over 12 inches long. Uh, pulled the, the, the specs from a Carter 24, 2435 manual. Uh, threaded in the end, oddly enough, how this one goes. And so this is going to go back in our jack shaft. And we'll get our sprocket back on the end. And then be able to mount our 3 quarter inch driven um, on the jack shaft. And ultimately put the 3 quarter inch drive back on our 5 horsepower motor. And hopefully at that point in time we'll have much more low end. So uh, we're going to see how it goes. I should be able to take my quarter inch key well, I'd have a lot more luck if I took the rear wheel off first frankly I might have to so I was banging my head trying to get the, uh, the jack shaft here to line up in such a way that it uh, would line up with my chain and I would mount it and then I was always a little off one direction or the other direction and finally when I slowed down to look at this uh, the jack shaft isn't symmetrical there's probably an inch and a half inch and three quarter overhang on this side as compared to an inch on this side so after struggling trying to figure out how do I get the sprocket and the all the two sprockets to align, finally figured out that well, this jack shaft, being that it's asymmetrical, needs to go like this. And I need to pull my sprocket over to the other side. So let me see that and see if I can get alignment here. Other than that, I think once I'm done with that, it's starting to rain pretty steady, so I'll probably pause and pick this up uh, another day or when the rain stops. Alright, another day here. <clears throat> so. Uh, here's where we're at. Before the rain drove me away last night, 
the jack shaft I figured out was not symmetrical so I got that lined up however you're seeing these two shafts aren't even close to lining up so the motor is going to have to be shifted uh, to the right <clears throat> now in doing that I don't know what it's going to take to get new bolt holes lined up and I'll tell you why because frame goes through here and then I have these other pipes all coming in so depending on where the holes want to line up I'm either putting it right through the frame uh, so I'm gonna mess with that a little later on the other thing is when I go to put on the driven pulley here and it does line up uh, it bumps against here so this whole corner motor uh, motor mount is going to have to be ground out we actually have the clearance for the belt when it expands and contracts depending on um, how the torque converter is operating so for now going to take a break going to go down do some paddle boarding because the rain has stopped we have a nice sunny day coming we'll come back and probably going to uh, hit some of this clean some up this gunk with a pressure washer just to make it a little easier to work on and go from there so Back in a bit. clean grease free surface to work with I go to clean this up figure out how I'm going to mount the motor and now I no longer have just caked grease everywhere still got a little bit here and there but that's, that's a world better than just having everything caked in alright All right. so now we're gonna see what we can do. I've jacked it up on some blocks just to give myself something to work on out here. Gonna see what we can do to uh, cut uh, this corner out. I'm gonna dry fit the uh, the driven sprocket on here first, and we'll see what needs to be done. see the dilemma coming together here I don't have the clearance so we're going to cut this out and hopefully there's enough when this is out for the belt to expand and contract so we'll see 
Cut a chunk out. Still warm, but uh, with any luck, the belt's going to fit in there, so we're going to dry fit that. And then we got to figure out what we're going to do about all these motor mounts. And the only reason I haven't just cut the whole thing out is, <laughs> well, I don't have a welder, so we're going to have to get creative as to how to mount the motor. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to do that. All right, that's the idea. I had to go get a longer bolt because the motor shaft um, wasn't long enough to accommodate the whole thing. So this is a 5 16 fine, uh, so that's 24 threads, and I had to do a 2 inch bolt compared to the <laughs> 1 inch that was on there uh, to get this. And I know I'm not quite lined up here, but when the motor was sitting right down you know, on the motor mount here, there wasn't enough clearance. The belt has expanded. It was going to rub on even the cutout I had there. So I had to jack everything up to get the clearance you're seeing here for this. Because as this spins, uh, the belt is going to move to the outside of the wheel from the inside. So it's going to get wider down here. That's what I'm going to have to watch for. So now i got to figure out how I'm going to mount this chunk of wood um, to the motor mount and then mount the motor to the wood because none of the none of the original holes now line up. So this is just a, a 2x8 that I've cut down and then we're going to try and line things up and see how things start and go. platform and then I should be able to drill the motor mounts through because there's meat here there's meat here and I recognize this is wood and it's not pressure treated um, but it is what we have to work with today and then I'll have to make a mount on a mount and countersink it from the bottom so that this all can set in so yeah it should be interesting but it's coming all right here we are back again <clears throat> so yesterday spent some time putzing around two by eight block you know which is seven inches um, by about 11 sitting on top of kind of staggered off of the old existing motor plate as you can see there and we cut out that section of plate down there so the belt has space and ran it and idled it but one of the challenges because I'm using wood is there's a little bit of flex when the motor gets up at high RPM you can see the whole thing kind of flex a little bit so we'll see what has to be done there and of course last night when I went to start things up I uh, 
and broke off the pull cord because it's got a sharp edge there. So I spun this around 180 degrees. I waxed the rope. So we're going to see. I think today we're going to get a chance to drive. Got to tighten a few things down, check the bolts, and <laughs> another funny thing. I'll see when this runs is that these wheels, both of them have some wobble. I don't know if it's the axle or these are split rims, how the rims are tightened down. So we're going to take a look. <clears throat> so, all right, that's where we're going to start this morning. So we'll see how it goes. All right, things are getting tightened down. I will comment on something here. This jack shaft I had to get. I'm not sure if you were able to see this with the light or not. But if I put the bolt in, I just start to feather it in become obvious here that uh, the holes on this jack shaft are not centered. You can see that so <clears throat> threads in just fine it'll hold just fine but uh, whoever lined this one up in China <laughs> probably lined it up freehand so very well. paper, roll it up with the label on the inside, peel back a little bit, stick it. All right. Got it together, been riding around, having to tweak a few things. Um, the motor on the chunk of wood does move around a little bit, so that gets interesting. Um, and you got to get this belt just right, otherwise um, too tight, and it tries to take off on you when you start it, and too loose, you lose the power. But the other thing that's been slowing me down today is the pull cord. Um, broke the pull cord, fixed the pull cord, broke the pull cord, fixed the pull cord, ran out of pull cord, went to the hardware store, and the guy says, this is the pull cord you need. It's thinner 
than the pull cord I had, but he says it gets wet, it expands, except for the thin pull cord, keep breaking the thin pull cord. Fix the thin pull cord, broke the thin pull cord again. Um, what, where it's breaking, there was a little nipple around here that turned into a very sharp edge, so I took the whole thing out, sanded this down, waxed the heck out of everything, but still I keep cutting cords right there, so uh, this is going to have to be bored out a little bit or something done. And I'm going to get my hands on some thicker pull cord. And we'll see where it goes from there. But definitely have been getting into a little bit of mud. It's coming. Still needs a little bit, but it's coming. 